dudes. It is butt cold here in North Florida. It was 37 degrees this morning. And uh, I wanted to shoot a vlog to keep the videos pumping out during the slow season. Some guys have been asking how I got into the apartment maintenance trade. So I wanted to do a little creation story about how, how all this got started and where I got started. And uh, at the end, I'll, I'll go into my last vlog I made about what's going to save the apartment maintenance trade. Some people thought uh, maybe I got in a fight or, or I don't like doing it anymore. No, I'm good, man. It's been peaceful for the last four years for me. But I'll get into that in a, in a minute. So how I got into apartment maintenance, I started back in 2003 in uh, student housing, actually. It wasn't a conventional property. I, I, I came in student housing. And, and it was supposed to be temporary. I was a musician, a guitarist. But this was right when Napster just devastated the music industry with the uh, you know the free downloading and all that and no record companies were shutting down closing down so I said man this this isn't looking good I need to find something uh, a little more stable and a, a friend of mine said uh, said that he was where he was working he was apartment maintenance guy and he said they were looking for a guy to paint and um, and pick up garbage so that's where I started eight dollars an hour porter picking up garbage and painting and I didn't know the difference between a flathead and a Phillips head I'm not exaggerating I mean I was a guitarist I've never done any kind of manual labor before or with tools or anything and uh, you know it was supposed to be temporary until the, the music industry bounced back and, and I saw that it was once I saw it was getting its legs back I was gonna jump back in and go full-time with music but I ended up liking it I ended up liking doing maintenance I said wow this is, this is fun I was 23 years old when I started in student housing so all the kids you know they were college kids they were my age and they would invite me to parties so I would come out and party with them after work have a good time and and the campus was Florida State a lot of the college kids I was working around were Florida State so I was getting the accolades from cheerleaders and all that all that good stuff and then the supervisor I was working with at the time noticed you know I had a good attitude and a good work ethic and they hired me on full time and uh, he started taking me around and showed me how to fix things easy stuff at first you know fill valves flapper valves ceiling fans the easy stuff and then I just took it from there and, and I mean three years later I was running my own property by myself so in three years I went from not knowing the difference between a flathead and a Phillips head to running a uh, 50 unit property by myself I just I ended up liking it I'm like well oh, this job's pretty fun man it's fun so uh, 2011 I left apartment maintenance and went back to being a guitarist full-time for four years I did that full-time didn't touch my, didn't really touch my tools or do any maintenance for four years and then I had kids I wanted to come off the road so I could spend a lot of time with my kids. I want my kids to know me. So I had to, I wanted to, get, I wanted to get back into maintenance. And I was rusty. Really rusty. So I wanted to knock the rust off and was wondering how I could do that. So I wondered, you know, I said, hey, I wonder if YouTube has videos I can watch to, to knock the rust off. And that's when I found Steve Lav. He had 6,000 subscribers back then this was like 2015 this is when he had 6,000 subscribers him and Fitz were old Fitz were getting into it uh, Ralph Wolf and John and John Israel were doing collaborating they were doing videos together you know this is back in the good old days you know I was watching all their videos back then and I thought wow you know this is cool I'm sure apartment maintenance could use some some videos like this just to help out the new guys the new techs that are coming in so that's when I decided to, to jump in and throw my hat in the mix. And I started the Dirty Maintenance Show because I was a fan of repair videos first, watching Lav and, and Ralph and, and Zach and all those guys. I was a fan first and decided to, hey, let me make my own and see if I can help some new apartment maintenance techs coming into the trade. So that's how all this started, man. And uh, I want my videos, my goal for 2019 is to make my videos shorter. I want, I want to get to the answers quicker. 
to give you the answers quicker so like when you're out in the field you can have your answers quick I want my uh, channel to be another tool in your arsenal so that's my goal for 2019 and uh, all right, let me let me go back to my last vlog. What's going to save the apartment maintenance trade? Because a lot of guys were wondering, like, hey man, did you get in a fight with your property manager? Uh, do you not like doing this anymore? Like, what's up? Like, no man, I haven't. I've, I'm good. It's been really peaceful for the last four years for me. I actually work for a good company, one of the good ones that I was talking about in the video, and um, I still love doing apartment maintenance. I think it's a cool job. And I know a lot of other guys would think it was cool too, but we, we've got to make our carrot bigger. We've got to have a bigger carrot. And that was the, the point of the whole video. It was just um, the trends that I'm seeing because I get messages from, from property managers and maintenance techs all over the world. Sorry, Skid Bros, I had to park real quick. So yeah, I get messages from ma property managers and maintenance techs from all over the world asking for advice on what they should do and the trends that I'm seeing were just irking me that day and the trend that I'm seeing from a lot of property management companies and property owners is let's see what we can get away with Let, let's rack up a bunch of technicalities so that we can get away with not paying overtime and things like that you know for example a tech goes out on Thanksgiving Day he leaves his family on Thanksgiving his Thanksgiving with his family he leaves and goes and fixes an oven that wasn't working went above and beyond fixed the oven got it going again performed a miracle comes in after Thanksgiving the next day or so and they're like oh thank you you know the companies that tell him thank you but oh got you in the technicality we can't pay you overtime for that because it's a holiday and you physically physically got to work 40 hours now do you think he's gonna do that again no he's not gonna do that again he's not gonna go above and beyond again so that, that irks me. You know, you want people to, to do things like that, to make your company look awesome, but you gotta compensate them for it. Don't catch, don't catch them in a technicality because it's a holiday. And, uh, and the, the other thing is, is just they're wanting steak for hamburger prices. And then they turn around on Facebook and post, oh, where's all the good people at? Where's all the good help at? Can't find a good maintenance guy ever. I mean, it's because you're wanting steak for hamburger prices and the, you're delusional. You're not going to get it. So that was it, guys. The whole point of the thing was the trend of wanting steak for hamburger prices. It's not going to happen. We need a bigger carrot to draw in the steaks that are going to teach the hamburgers how to be steaks. That was the whole point of the uh, the vlog. I'm fine. Did get it. I've never, haven't been in any fights or nothing. In four years and I love doing apartment maintenance and I work for a great company so it was just all the messages I've been getting I was it was just irked me that day and I had to talk about it all right uh, see y'all the next one thank you all for watching Thanks.